When we started talking about Passive House for our new build, we got a lot of questions about what Passive House really is. Let's imagine that it's minus 30 degrees outside. A code-built home, or a home that would be standard for our climate zone, is kind of like putting on a spring jacket and going outside at minus 30 and realizing that the only way you can stay warm is by running and generating a lot of heat, using a lot of energy, using your body as the furnace. Passive House is like stepping outside in a full one-piece snowsuit that was designed for Everest and realizing that you can just go for a leisurely stroll. You can be super comfortable and you can enjoy being somewhere that it's minus 30 without it being a strenuous and exhausting type of exercise. We appreciate the beautiful and the simplicity in the whole principle behind Passive House and so we could fully really get behind it and uh, it just made so much sense from a very basic level. There are a multitude of green standards out there but in terms of stringency and in terms of really being aggressive in considering climate change and what the planet really needs from housing these days, Passive House is kind of the gold standard and says this is the energy targets that we need to set for our houses so that we can save the planet that we live on, but also so that we can create homes that are every bit as comfortable as a high performance home promises it should be. So the real keys to Passive House, the home is very well insulated and that insulation is both in the walls and the ceilings and the floors, but also the window selection is a part of that insulation solution. Kind of all forms the building envelope, which is what we call the shell of the home that protects us from the outdoor environment. Having a super well insulated envelope is key to retaining all of the heat and energy that we use in the home and not just losing it at will to the environment when it's colder outside than inside. So when we cook, when we shower, when we breathe, we are little furnaces just living and breathing as human beings. So all of that heat is kept in the house and is actually working to keep our house warm and, and us warm in return. While we were building the home, we were renting another, probably a 60 year old house. And one morning I was up early, it was February I think, and I was listening to the furnace. And the furnace in this house we were renting was turning on and off every seven minutes. In this house, our furnace is a, about the size of a toaster oven. It's a four kilowatt electric heater about as powerful as two hair dryers. It'll run gently overnight and usually by about eight o'clock in the morning it shuts off and it doesn't come on again until eight o'clock at night. And when this house does lose temperature, it loses it at a rate of about one degree Celsius an hour instead of five degrees Celsius every seven minutes. And that's because of that insulated shell that we put on it. That's the parka that we built around ourselves. Even if the furnace conks out, it won't ever freeze because we are gaining so much energy from the sun during the day and it loses heat at such a slow temperature, the sun makes up for any heat loss. That means if we lost power for two weeks in the dead of winter in Ottawa, our pipes would never freeze. This house is not going to blow up and flood because of an ice storm. So the second piece of the passive house puzzle that's important is air tightness. Air tightness is measured in air changes per hour and that means when you do a test for air tightness and you get a number, for example, three air changes per hour, that if the wind was blowing at about 25 kilometers an hour, 30 kilometers an hour consistently, you would expect the total volume of air in your home to be exchanged three times in an hour because of leakage to the outside. Not because you want it to, but because the house has holes in it. If you don't zip up the parka, it's not gonna keep in the heat. So if you can seal those holes, that's going to make the building envelope perform the way it's intended to perform. The National Building Code assumes that a typical standard new house is about two and a half air changes per hour. I know from professional experience that it's actually much worse than that. This home uh, is 0.46 air changes per hour, which is comfortably under the Passive House standard of 0.6 air changes per hour. The third piece of the Passive House puzzle that's critical is ventilation. You can't just pick any one of these three things and you know not do the other two. They all need to work together and they all need to be improved together. There's no such thing as a home that's too airtight. There's only homes that are underventilated. Because the ventilation system is the lungs of the home. That's where you get your fresh air and that's where you want to get your fresh air. You don't want it leaking through the rim joist or through a crack in your foundation and coming in through dust and soil. You want it to come in through filters. You want it to be delivered by continuous ductwork that's clean to the rooms that you need to breathe it in. 
and that's what our balanced ventilation system provides. It brings in the exact same amount of fresh air as it exhausts stale air, so that we always have a continuous exchange. It doesn't recirculate that air, so all of the air that it brings in is fresh. But as it's doing that exchange of air, it's recovering the heat from the air that is going out of the house and transferring it to the air that's coming into the house so that it's not uh, an energy penalty to do that. Yeah. Our ventilation system runs continuously, every day, all year. It doesn't cycle on and off. So 24 hours a day, we are getting a, a supply of fresh air. And that's really what you want because if it's the lungs of the home and you ask me, how often do you want your lungs to work? I would say all the time, please. Uh, that makes sense to me. The quality of air is one of these intangibles that you don't know you've been missing either. In the last old house we were in, we were sick constantly, running noses, everything. It was just non-stop. And then when we got into this house, everyone was healthy. So those are the three pieces that I think are most key to a passive house. Our home uses you know, roughly 75 to 80% less energy than a typical new build of the same size. But beyond the energy piece, it makes a comfortable indoor environment. It allows us to be in our homes and enjoy the feeling of just being in the home. I actually have designed a couple of other passive homes for other clients. One client described, she said, in my previous home, I lived like this with my shoulders closed in a protect myself sort of a way. When I moved into my passive house, it was like I could breathe. It was like I could relax. And just that yeah. being able to open yourself because your windows are not radiating cold air, your floors are not cold to your feet. As Megan said, intangible nature of, of comfort, it shows itself in spades in a passive house. It's special but successful because it just is. The passive house elements of the home are passive and almost invisible once we get comfortable in the home. They get out of the way as good design should and allow us just to enjoy the beautiful space.